Nipper's Guide. Welcome to our Nipper exam video on how to pass your level 3 exam. This is for children that are 12 and 13 years old under 13 and 14 nippers. For this exam, you need to be able to do a 400 meter swim, 16 lengths in under 9 minutes. On the day of your exam, you'll do a run swim run. The run is 150 meters, then a 200 meter swim, then another 150 meter run. You'll have to do a Malibu board paddle out around the can in the ocean, 50 sit ups, and 20 push ups. For the exam, there are four main sections in the, in the exam. There's the water safety section where you learn all 12 rules in the manual. There's the first aid section where you learn 13 of the first aid tips. Um, then there's 14 signals and four lifeguard um, tips at the end. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> we will. <laughs> For water safety level three, you need to learn all 12 of the water safety rules. Rule one, always have an adult with you. An adult is able to respond quickly and effectively in an emergency situation. Rule two, only swim in safe areas. If you're on the beach, only swim where there are lifeguards present and make sure you swim in between the red and the yellow flags. If you're in other areas like a swimming pool, do check that there are lifeguards present. And if you're at a strange beach or dam, make sure there are no rocks before you go jumping in. Rule number three, know your limits. Don't show off. Know your abilities. Don't swim if the waves are too big and if there are strong rip currents, stay out. If you are not a good swimmer, try not go too deep. Rule number four, never swim or surf alone. Always go swimming and surfing with someone. If something happens to you, you've got someone there who can help you. And if, rule number five, if in doubt, stay out. Make sure you know the conditions before jumping into any water. Check for rocks or hidden objects and rip currents. If there are no lifeguards on duty, stay out. Rule number six, always use correct and safe equipment. For instance, if it's cold, use a wetsuit, but make sure that it fits correctly. Use a board. So a bodyboard or a surfboard with handles and a leash. Use flippers when you're swimming or paddling in a strong current. Rule number seven is a very important rule. It's being aware of currents. At the beach, you want to be aware of rip currents. A rip current is when water is flowing from the beach back out to sea. And there's certain ways that you could know what a rip current looks, looks like. There's some identifying features. There's a list in the manual. The, some of the features are that you'll see some calm patches of water in where the waves are, in the surf, uh, with waves breaking on either side of these calm patches. Another feature is that the rip current, the water is deeper, so the, 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 the color of the water is a little bit darker. So oftentimes rip currents are ripple and there's some crisscross water on the surface of the rip current. A rip current is often a different color water to the, the wave water, the water with the waves on the side and often there's stuff floating in the rip current. And then many times rip current is a foamy surface on the top of the rip current that extends or that's going out to sea. When you are caught in the rip current, very important that you don't want to try and fight that current. You want to swim parallel to the beach. Go with the current and then swim parallel to the beach uh, across the rip current to get out of the current into the breaking waves and then use the breaking waves to push yourself back to shore. Don't try and swim against the rip current. Along the along piers or beaches or rocky uh, sections, uh, you'll often find rip currents. So if there's a, a edge of a beach, that's where you're going to find rip currents. Or if there's a pier or a, or a, a rocky um, groin or something like that, that's where you're going to find rip currents on the side of those patches of structures. Sometimes you might be in a river current, and it's important that if you are caught in a river and it's flowing very fast, you want to float down the river with your feet first. So have your feet on the surface of the water and float down the river with your feet first. And then if you want to get back to shore, don't try and swim against the current, swim with and across the current uh, to where the water is a little bit uh, shallower and the flow has slowed down. Rule number eight, consider other people. You don't want to go surfing where there's people swimming. Consider those people. If you fall off your surfboard or your board, your Malibu, you might hit those people. So consider those people if you are on a, on a board. Also, if you are swimming, 
keep an eye out for, people, for board riders, people that are on boards or on equipment. Be considerate when you are out in the water and swimming or cuddling your board. Rule number nine is don't swim or surf when you are tired or when you are cold. Sometimes if you're swimming, if you're cold or you're tired, you could get cramps and it'll make it difficult to get out of the water. So don't swim when you're tired or you're cold. Rule number 10, listen to the lifeguards. Lifeguards know what they're talking about. They are there to keep you safe in the water. So you want to listen to the advice from the lifeguards. They stop people that are that could get into trouble from getting into trouble and they have specifically set out a beach for you to go and swim at. So always listen to the lifeguards. Rule number 11 is an important rule, don't swim at night. Do not swim at night. It's difficult to see you if you get into trouble at night. And also, you can't see any dangers in the water. Only if it's really safe, like at a pool uh, where there's lots of light, or there's people around and it's actually made to, to swim at night, can you swim at night. Not a good idea to swim at night in places where it wasn't made to swim at night. The last rule is that you should keep all containers of water and when I say container I mean like water tanks or swimming pools or anything that has water in it, big bodies of water, keep them covered. If you're not using them make sure you've got a cover over the water so that if somebody falls in they're not going to get into trouble. In the first aid section of the NIPRA exam, there are 13 rules in total and if you are doing the under 13 and under 14 in NIPRA exam, you have to learn all the rules in the first aid section, there are 13. The first rule in first aid is sun sense. Not only is sunburn uh, very painful if you get burned badly, sunburn also can lead to heat exhaustion and sun stroke. You want to slip on a shirt. You want to slop on some sunscreen and you want to slap on a hat. Slip, slop, slap. Slip on a shirt. Slop on sunscreen. Slap on a hat. Remember, sun scents. Blue bottle stings. Blue bottles can be found all along the coast of South Africa. It's a little blue animal floating on the surface of the water and it's got a long tentacle and if the tentacle wraps around your arm or your leg or touches you, any part of your body, it stings. The first thing is you do not want to rub it with sand. What you want to do is those tentacles sometimes get stuck onto your skin. You gently want to uh, use some seawater to wash it off or pick it off with your fingers and just pull off the this, this sting from your, from your arm. And you can put some ice on there to take the pain away. And then you want to go to the lifeguards or if, uh, you know, if it gets really bad, you want to seek some medical advice. Cramps. The most common causes of cramp are if you're doing too much exercise of unfit muscles. And what happens is your muscles contract into a ball and it can be very, very sore. And sometimes you can't move your arm or your leg or whatever part of your body is, uh, is cramping. So, if you get a cramp in the water, the first thing that you want to do is you want to try and relax and float on your back and then just try and signal for some help. Don't panic and try and stretch the muscle out. If there's no one there to help you, you want to try and safely, gently just float back to shore to the side of the pool without using the muscles that are cramping. And then when you get out the water, try and keep that muscle warm and you can gently massage that cramp out. Sand in the eyes. If you go to the beach, very common for you to get sand in your eyes. It's important when you get sand in your eyes, you don't want to rub the eye with the sand in it. You want to try and use some water to wash it out, or you can use a damp cloth to, to rub it out. Uh, you can also take your eyelid and pull your eyelid over the eye and as you blink your eye inside, it will move the sand out to the side. Bleeding. When you're helping somebody who's bleeding, very important, before you start helping them, put some gloves on uh, so that you keep the blood off your hands. So if you are treating minor cuts, obviously you want to stop any activity that you're doing. You're not going to carry on playing beach cricket while you've got a cut on your hand. 
You want to place a pressure on the bleeding part with your fingers or with a bandage. If you can, try and pick up the part of the body which is bleeding, like the leg or the arm. You want to try and clean around the wound with some disinfectant. Uh, put a dressing or a bandage uh, on that while putting, keeping pressure on that wound. And if the bleeding doesn't stop, if it's getting serious, if it's serious bleeding, then you need to go and get some medical help. Nose bleeding. If you should get a bleeding nose, sit down, put your head forward and pinch the soft part of your nose for about five minutes and breathe through your mouth. Don't tilt your head back and also remember not to blow or sniff through your nose. Heat exhaustion. This is a condition that often happens if your body loses water or salt and it's some things to look for that if um, you're having some heat exhaustion is if you feel a bit of headaches or you're feeling a bit dizzy, you might um, experience some cramps in the muscle, um, cold, clammy and pale um, skin or even you feel a bit fainty. This might be a sign that you're suffering from heat exhaustion. How to treat this? Stop all activity immediately. Um, go and sit in a cool place, drink some water and seek medical help as soon as you can. Bee stings. Don't panic. Um, if you get a bee sting, try and get the bee sting out with um, something sharp, like a bank card or a little bit of a knife or something. Don't squeeze the sting because it might push the poison right back into your body. Um, apply, apply ice over the area. Um, sometimes a bee, bee sting can be quite dangerous. If someone is allergic to bee stings, they might start to struggle to breathe if this is the case. Um, seek medical attention as quickly as you can. Broken bones. How to treat a broken bone? Um, firstly, if there is bleeding involved, you need to control the bleeding and we've just covered the section on bleeding. Have a look at that. Um, support the injured limb if there is a broken bone. Um, don't move the limb. So try and provide support for it, but don't move it and seek medical help um, as quickly as you can. Fainting. Uh, a number of things can affect or cause somebody to faint. Um, sometimes just emotions can cause someone to faint or they're really exhausted, um, especially if they've got lots of heat to heat exhaustion, they can faint. Dehydration, there's a few number of things um, that can have caused someone to faint. How to treat um, someone who has fainted. Place the person in a comfortable recovery position. Um, reassure the person, stay with them, comfort them, um, just encourage them and then look for medical help um, as soon as you can. In the first aid section of the NIPRA exam, there's a part called CPR resuscitation. Now CPR resuscitation is going to cover a number of scenarios that you might encounter uh, if you are on the beach and you need to uh, help somebody who is lying on the floor or on the ground. The first thing that if you come across somebody who's lying on the ground and they're not really responding, the first thing that you're going to do is remember your three H's. The three H's stand for hazards, hello, and help. So you want to look around for any hazards, uh, broken glass, or maybe there's some electrical cable, uh, there's something there that has caused this person to be in this position. You don't want to fall in the same trap, so look for any obvious hazards, something that's lying there that could be a problem. And then you want to approach the person and see if you can perhaps wake them up or get them to open their eyes or respond to you. That's the hello. You say hello, hi there, can I help you, are you okay? You want to see if they're breathing. If they're breathing and there's still no response from them, you obviously want to call for help. An adult or a lifeguard, or maybe there's some, some medical people nearby. Call for help and then put that person in the recovery position. This is if they are breathing. So you've gone down to see if they're breathing, listened, and they're breathing, then you put them in the recovery position. The recovery position is a position that you're going to put someone's body in that's going to keep their airway breathing and they're going to be in a bit more of a comfortable position. So first what you want to do is place the hand which is closest to you against their face. Then you're going to place the opposite arm across the body like that. Then you're going to turn the whole person as a unit together with your one hand. You're going to grab the hip and roll them over gently. Okay. Then you want to just pull the knee which is on the top into an L position 
and, and that knee is then going to support their body while they're lying on their side. So basically you're going to pull the person onto their side with their hand under their head supporting their, ha their head, another hand over the, their chest and the leg on the ground in like an L position. For the under 13 or 14 part of the NIPRA exam relating to the flag or the hand signals, you have to learn all 14 of the signals. If you are in the water swimming, please come and help me is one hand up. The stress signal is both arms waving to and fro above your head. If you are on the land and you're using the flags and you are signaling someone out in the water to attract attention, you're going to wave both flags above your head. Return to shore signal is one flag raised above your head. Proceed to your right signal is the flag straight out towards your right hand side. The proceed to your left side is the flag straight out to the left hand side. Proceed further out to sea is both flags up above your head. If there is a shark in the water and you need to get people out, you will raise the shark alarm flag. The remain stationary signal is both flags or both hands out towards your side. If the message you receive was understood, then you wave one flag across the front of your body. If the message was not understood, then you wave both flags in front of your chest, across the front of your body. If you are on a craft in the water and you want to signal that there is a shark, you raise both hands above your head. The all clear sign, if there's no more shark to be seen, is both arms horizontally. If you are in the inflatable rescue boat, the IRB or the rubber ducky, and you are going to be returning to shore, you have one hand out to your side and you wave it up and down at a 45 degree angle. And the last signal is assistance required by a lifeguard in the water. Let's do a little bit of practice on the signals without looking at the camera or looking at the video. Are you ready? Practice that without looking at the screen. I'm going to give it to you in different orders. Show me the proceed left signal. Show me the signal if you are on the land and you want the craft to return back to the shore. Return to shore signal. If you are on land and you want the craft to proceed further out to sea. Show me the message understood signal. And if the message is not understood, what is the all clear signal for a shark alarm if you are on the craft in the water? What is the signal for the ILB returning to shore? Show me the please come and help me signal if you are in the water swimming. What does the distress signal look like when you are in the water swimming? How do you attract attention from the shore? The attract attention signal from the shore. You now know your signals. <laughs> well done. For level 3 and under 13 and 14, there's a section on life saving. There are four points that you need to learn there. In the world of life saving, you're going to come across a number of important signs and apparatus that is used in life saving. The first thing you need to know is the international life saving colors. These are red and yellow and they are the colors worn by the lifeguards when they are on duty. But one of the flags you'll often see is a red and yellow flag, a horizontal red and yellow flag, and that indicates that life lifeguards are in patrol in the area. When you see a red and yellow flag that is diagonal, that is a flag that is used um, for signaling certain instructions or information back and forth. On beaches, you're going to encounter various signs. A green circular sign with a swimmer indicates where a swimming area is. And if you see a red circular sign with a swimmer with a line through it, that means there is no swimming permitted in that area. And similar, you have a green circular sign with a surfer on the inside. That indicates you're allowed surfing in the area. And likewise, a red circular sign with a surfer in the middle and a line through it indicates there is no surfing permitted um, in that area. A black sign with a shark, you guessed it, indicates there is a, that is a shark signal, okay? And then green boards, you'll often see on beaches, there are green informational boards 
that just gives you information about the date, the tide, when low tide and high tide is to be expected in that location. Another apparatus you'll come across on the beach is a rescue torpedo buoy. You get two types of these buoys. Some of them are hard and rigid, others are soft and flexible. They are used by lifeguards to help get to victims quickly in the ocean and also to provide support um, or floating devices when they get there. They're not toys, so if you do see people playing with them on the beach, please report that to a lifeguard. What to do when someone needs help? Dial your local emergency number. Tell them your name and your number, then tell them the type of the emergency. Give them the exact location, answer all the questions and tell the person what is happening. Make sure that you put down the phone last. Return to the patient. A quick guide of what to say. Who you are, where you are calling from and why you are calling. What to do if someone needs help? Hazards, hello, help. Hazards, is it safe? Hello, check responsiveness. Help, call for backup. Hazards, hello.